Apollo there. Let's take a look at Valhalla Plate. Valhalla Plate is a high-quality reverb plugin made by Valhalla DSP. It was designed from the outset to be easy to use, and to sound good with basically any parameter settings. This is a natural consequence of being inspired by plate reverbs. An EMT 140 usually had between 1 and 2 parameters, decay time, and sometimes a high pass filter on the input jack of the plate. The goal of Valhalla Plate was to expand upon the possibilities of physical plates, while keeping the simplicity of plates. Let's have a quick rundown of the controls. Mix Wet to dry mix, with 0% corresponding to a dry signal, 100% corresponding to only reverb, and 50% being an equal mix between the two. The mix control uses the standard sine slash cosine crossfade lot used by all Valhalla plugins. Mix lock. Click on the word mix above the mix knob, to lock the mix at a given value. This is useful when browsing through presets, or when using Valhalla Plate as a send. It was designed to use as a send, by the way. Sends are preferred for reverbs. Pre-delay A stereo pre-delay, in front of the plate models. The time is specified in milliseconds, and the knob is warped so that there is more control over shorter delays. Decay The heart of the plugin. This controls the mid-range decay time, which is defined differently for the different reverb modes. In general, this is an accurate measurement of the RT60 between 2.9 kHz and 3.6 kHz. Below this frequency, the decay time will be either shorter or longer. A quick rule of thumb. For decay settings less than 1 second, the low frequency decay will be shorter than the display. For decay settings between 1 and 2 seconds, the low frequency decay will roughly track the decay setting. For decay settings greater than 2 seconds, the low frequency decay will be longer than the decay setting. The specific decay frequency curve is dependent on the mode setting. High frequencies tend to have a fairly short decay setting, regardless of the decay setting. Short settings of decay will have shorter high frequency decays, but once you get decay settings greater than 3 seconds, the high frequency decay time tends to stay fixed. Again, different modes will have different high frequency decay behavior. The decay knob has been warped so that the majority of the knob travel covers typical plate decays, i.e., between 0.5 and 6 seconds or so. The last 25% of the knob travel allows for decay times much longer than a physical plate. This probably isn't physically accurate, but according to Valhalla, it sounds cool. Size This controls the size of the plate, in arbitrary units. More accurately, this controls the modal density of the plate. Smaller sizes, between 0% and 100%, will create a more metallic sound, that is typical of physical plates. Larger sizes, greater than 100%, allow you to get a much higher modal density than a typical plate, which can create a smoother or clearer reverb sound. 
width. Adjusts the stereo output width of the reverb. 100% corresponds to a typical reverb plate, where each pickup goes to a separate output channel. 0% mixes the left and right outputs together, and sends them to the left and right output channels. Width settings less than 100% can be useful for creating a smaller stereo image. Width settings greater than 100% increase the perceived width of the image. This isn't a conventional MS matrix, the width control has been optimized for reverb signals. EQ Low Freak Adjusts the cutoff frequency of a first order low shelving filter on the output of the reverb. EQ Low Gain Adjusts the boost cut of the frequencies below the EQ Low Freak setting. This is a gentle boost cut, and can be used to add some clarity or weight to the reverb. EQ High Freak Adjusts the cutoff frequency of a first order high shelving filter on the output of the reverb. EQ High Gain Adjusts the boost cut of the frequencies above the EQ High Freak setting. This is a gentle boost cut, and can create some nice warmth when turned below 0 decibels, or add a little sheen when turned above 0 decibels. It is worth noting that the equalization of Valhalla plate will change with the decay setting. This is found in real physical plates. The overall equalization is different for each of the reverb modes, with different modes having more or less inherent brightness. Also, the EQ filters are not embedded within the reverb algorithm itself, so the settings of these filters will not affect the decay of the reverb. Mod Rate Controls the speed in hertz of the low frequency modulation of the reverb. This is a chorusing type modulation, but more subtle than I have used in previous reverb models. The goal of the modulation is to reduce metallic artifacts, without creating pitch changes or obvious chorusing in the output signal. Mod Depth Controls the depth of the reverb modulation. For realistic physical plates, this should be set to 0%. Turning this up will take much of the metal out of the plate, which can be a good thing for more generic reverb applications. Mode This menu displays the active reverb modes, and can be used to select one of seven unique plate emulation algorithms. Preset. This displays the name of the active preset. Click on the name of the active preset to bring up the reverb menu, which allows you to select different presets, save presets, import presets from text format, useful for pasting into forums, emails, blogs, etc., and export presets. The arrows to the right of the preset name allow you to scroll through the list of presets. Now let's look at the reverb modes. The mode control in Valhalla Plate is a super powerful, high level control that allows you to switch between 12 different reverb algorithms. Chrome This is a good starting point for the plugin. This is a fairly neutral sounding plate. The attack is not super sharp, and the tone is kinda bright, but not too bright. 
steel. Similar to chrome, but darker. Brass. Much sharper attack than the first three modes. If you listen to the signal 100% wet, it almost sounds like there is some dry signal in there. Cobalt. This has a deeper attack than both chrome and steel, i.e., the sound seems to come from a more distant sound source. The tonality is fairly dark. There is a bit of resonance in the very low mid-range, that was dialed in from a specific EMT-140 from a vast recording. Most of the other Valhalla plate modes were deliberately designed to have a more neutral tonality, but this low mid-range resonance was key to getting close to that specific sound. Adamantium Mono in, stereo out mode, with the dense upper mid-range and lower modal density found in older plates. Lower modal density, with lots of high frequency air. Titanium Mono in, stereo out mode. Darker tone color than adamantium. Osmium Mono in, stereo out mode. Dark tone color, with a booming low end that is befitting of the densest metal found in nature. Aluminium Much higher modal density than the first four modes. With the size parameter set greater than 100%, aluminium can sound much more like a chamber than a plate. There is a slight metallic sound to a well-tuned plate, that the first four reverb modes have. Aluminium, and copper and unobtainium, have less of this metallic sound and can sound much clearer. The overall tonality of aluminium is fairly bright. Copper High modal density, but deeper and darker than aluminium. The sound seems to come from deep within the plate. Set the size up to 200%, add a touch of modulation, and you have an open sounding reverb that works on almost any source material. Unobtainium. High modal density, bright, with a longer high frequency decay than the other plates. This is Valhalla's take on the eco plate sound, but without the metallic ringing artifacts. Turn up the modulation, and you have a perfect reverb for synths. Radium. A chamber plate hybrid that uses the equivalent of two parallel mono plates to preserve the stereo image of your input signal. Lithium A lush chamber plate hybrid, with a unique approach to the stereo image that is inspired by the stereo chambers found in some recording studios. helps to preserve the input panning of signals, while still having a realistic fill of the stereo image over time. Now you know how to use Valhalla Plate Reverb. Check out the other tutorials we have on numerous reverbs, effects and instruments. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. Have a great day.